welcome to Dyer Times. I'm David Dyer, and today we're going to be discussing non-lethal self-defense options. Here to assist me is Penny Maple. The last product we will show you is the Taser. Now most people don't realize, but Taser is the name of the company, Taser International. They supply law enforcement with many of the non-lethal devices used in the field, like this older model M26. They also have a civilian line, and the top of that line is a product called the Taser C2. It's smaller and more sleek, very easy to use, and allows the user the ability to stop their attacker at a distance or in a hand-to-hand -hand situation. The Taser C2 has many features, such as a safety, like much of the, many of the other devices we've looked at, which is this cover here. It also has the ability to reload it. Uh, the Taser, however, works much differently than a stun gun. It uses compressed air to fire two probes up to a distance of 15 feet into a would-be attacker. Taser technology does not rely on localized pain compliance like a stun gun. It affects the entire sensory and motor functions uh, of the nervous system and inhibits muscular control completely. Uh, this keeps an attacker down and completely immobile regardless of whether or not they're using drugs or alcohol. Okay, Penny, let's do some practical exercises with it and see how you feel. Okay. All right, unlike pepper spray or a stun gun, you take the taser with both hands. You can move the cover that reveals the uh, trigger button uh, and a green light. When the green light comes on, it also turns on, uh, and this all happens in one fell swoop, a laser light combo. So you can kind of see the laser and the light there. Uh, now once you press the button, the taser will work. When you close the cover, it will turn it off. Uh, now, if you find yourself in a situation where you have to defend yourself, uh, with this taser. Take it with both hands like we said. Put it forward, but not too far forward that somebody can't take it away from you. Uh, and then let them know if they're far enough away that you have a taser. Now, most times the fact that you have a taser will deter the person, period. If they've been tased before, I can assure you they will not want this again. Um, as a police officer, a lot of times uh, the, well, in the two times that I actually had to unholster my weapon uh, in, a, in, a, in a violent situation, uh, neither time produced the results that the taser did. Because every time I pulled my taser on duty, they knew exactly what they were going to get, and they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was going to pull that trigger. Where with a with a bullet, you know, the the ramifications of it are slightly different. So. Uh, what happens, once you press that button, you'll notice that there is no cartridge in there, and I'm holding that in my hand. Um, the electric charge of the taser sets off uh, the compressed air in the cartridge and deploys two barbs. Uh, now these barbs, of course, are going to go into this target here for practice, uh, and then we're going to do a live demo. But uh, in addition to those barbs, there's going to be copper wire that is wrapped in like a light plastic so that if you get a hold of it, it won't shock you. Uh, but it, they also have these nifty little aphids um, or little, little discs that have a, a code on them that is unique to the person that owns the taser because one of the things that, that in the process of perching this taser is you have to have a background check. So when they do that, it's automatically entered on each cartridge. Now when you buy new cartridges for your taser, they give you a little card and you put in these numbers on the card, little postcard, and you send it back to them and now this cartridge is registered to you. Uh, so, where that comes into play is if you actually have an attacker and you have to use the taser, when the barbs fire, these little discs of multiple colors spray all over the ground and the police, uh, if, if your attacker is successful, well, let's hope not, but the police can come there and they'll find these and know that that was your last known location. So it gives them a foothold on where they need to start looking or you know what needs to start happening. Uh, but if you get a solid hit with a taser, you're going to come out on top. So just like before, we're going to have you slide the safety down. You're going to you notice that now the taser is armed, and that there is a red dot, and it's there. You go, a red dot on there. Now once the red dot, put it about center. You're going to want that red dot about center mass on your attacker. And once you have it, press your button. Okay. Now she. What she did was she closed the cover as soon as she fired. 
you don't want to do that if you're in an actual situation. And then, of course, once you get the taser laid on the ground, you want to retreat to a safe location and call 911. Now, Taser International has a fantastic program. These, one of the downsides to tasers are they are expensive. This taser uh, with a laser light combo will run you um, 300, about $350. Now that comes typically with the a couple cartridges to practice with and they have a CD and uh, you know all that. Uh, and another downside to a taser is not all states will allow you to carry it. Uh, some states have a training program where you have to go through the training to actually be tased to carry it. So, you know, before you invest in a taser, you want to check and, and make sure that you can actually carry it there. Um, so, now what you see down here is the barb stuck in uh, this. You'll see they spread about uh, eight inches, which is about where you want it to be. Okay, to show you how truly effective of a self-defense uh, product this is, Charlie has volunteered to be tased. So, what we're going to do is we're going to reload the taser. Two fingers puts a fresh cartridge in it. Uh, I'm going to hand this over to Penny, uh, and in the interest of safety, um, we're not going to have him actually assault her. We're just going to have him at this distance, and this is about five feet. Uh, this uh, can go much longer, uh, but I, I want a nice. I, I want to make sure that there's no issues with the prongs hitting him and the camera being able to see it, so you, the viewer, can get the most out of this. So what she's going to do uh, here in a moment is she's going to put that red dot about center mass on his chest. Now what she learned from the first time was? I'll just hit the cover back. Okay, and then what? And then aim at center mass, uh -huh. wait for the red dot, and then deploy the taser by pressing the button. There you go. Okay, so do you have any other questions outside of that how it operates? Uh, no, I'm going to hand it to you and then you run control setting now. There we go. Okay, so typically uh, once she tases uh, him in a true situation, a true real life uh, situation, she's going to put that taser on the ground and then exit to a safe location and call the police. But in the interest of what we're doing here, uh, she's just going to hand it over to me and we'll continue with this situation. So, uh, if everybody's ready, you good to go? All right. Good to go? All right. At your leisure. Stop there. There you go. Okay, so as you can see, unlike a stun gun, that took him all the way to the ground. Well, Charlie, how do you feel? Well, I felt that the stun gun was more of a burning, sharp sensation, mm -hmm. while the taser was more kind of a dull, and I couldn't get away from it, and I just had to drop it. Whenever I get hit with it. it was very intense. Yes. Well, it was intense for me, too. Well, that's the first time you've been tasered, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's the first time I've been tasered or. Sun gun. A sun gun. I'm just glad you didn't pee yourself. Yeah, yeah, I am too. Uh, <laughs> I'm just glad. Uh, hope I never get hit with either one again. But. So, what would you uh, like for you know, like your sister, or your girlfriend, or your wife to carry? Well, uh, I think I'd rather have them have the taser. It seemed to be more effective. Well, we didn't do this today, but I know that you've been pepper sprayed before. And how does that compare to the taser? Well. The pain with pepper spray lasts a lot longer than with these mm -hmm. two methods. But. How was it on initial contact? Is it as effective as the taser at dropping you? I don't think it's initial contact, but after a few seconds it, it can overwhelm me. So we've had the opportunity here with Penny to go through a pepper spray, a stun gun, and a taser. And um, ultimately what I'd like to do is just get some of your thoughts on it. Um, you know, now that you know about these things and the self-defense options you have, what are your thoughts now that you have some knowledge? Well, um, I learned a lot today. Uh, we debunked a few myths about tasers that, you know, that people hold, you know, I thought it would make you pee yourself or give you a heart attack or that someone, you know, the person that was supporting Charlie, I thought that maybe they would also feel some pain from it, but apparently not. Um, I don't carry anything right now, but now I have my pepper spray, and I'm really pleased with that. Um, I don't like the stun gun very much, but I like the pepper spray. Uh, the taser was very intense for me, um, but I certainly would love to have something like that if someone were to assault me, you know, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't 
so the safety cover quite quickly, that's for sure. Of course. And the pepper spray is appealing to me because, you know, that's going to cause inflammation and possibly, you know, some irritation in eyes and mucus membranes for mm -hmm. hours after, so that's also appealing to me. So, that being said, uh, you know, given your current situation, uh, what, what do you think the best option for you is? If I could afford it, I would certainly have a taser because I don't have to worry about hurting myself at the same time. Absolutely. Um, it, now, the cartridges, you just want single-use things. Single-use cartridge, yes. Yeah. But uh, you can, they come in single, two, and four packs. Uh, and the cartridges typically run between, you know, uh, about 25 bucks a cartridge. But usually so. you have, you know, that cartridge loaded. Absolutely. So you have one shot to kind of hit that person. Otherwise, what are you going to do, like, spraying them well, with Well, actually, what we didn't discuss, uh -huh. and I'm glad that you brought that up, is that when you do discharge the, the taser, and, the, and if you happen to miss with a barb, mm -hmm. uh, it's still an effective weapon. You can actually continue forward, just like you did with the stun gun, uh, and touch that to them. Um, if you if you don't get get a solid hit with the prongs, so, so if the prongs are already mm -hmm, out, mm -hmm. as long as the wire is does, touching them, nope, doesn't make any difference. The, the you just have to touch them with the end of the taser because it's still it's still doing yeah, yeah it okay. still has a charge. So, um, so that's that's useful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not like I said, not only effective up to 15 feet, but hand to hand. You know, if you miss that shot, then just if they if they still are coming at you, hit them with that and. And it should should remedy that too. So it, it it's definitely unique in that it handles can handle both situations. Okay, that's a lot more versatile than I thought. So taser taser seems to be the top one for me. Pepper spray second, trying that not very appealing. I would agree with you. The bottom line is have a plan, have your defense product ready, and don't hesitate. Take it upon yourself to get the proper training for the product that you choose, and make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions on its proper use. Really like to thank Penny uh, for being a part of this and for her time. Oh, it's totally my pleasure. And um, don't forget, check out my blog, horrorfullife.com, uh, for all things horror related if you are a horror fan like me. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for watching, and a big thanks to Penny, and an even bigger thanks to Charlie uh, for getting tased. Uh, if you'd like to see Penny back, give me a thousand likes, and we'll do a video on improvised urban. Uh, weaponry. So if you don't have a product at all, we can find some things in a city setting and do similar things. Uh, so if you would, please like, subscribe, and if you have any comments, please place them in the section below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks so much. Take care.